Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to get a little technology glitch. All right, we'll start that again. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the annual meeting of the District of Seashell. It being 305, we'll call the meeting to order. Council, uh, we have our amended agenda in front of us and uh, some uh, revised uh, 2022 annual report. Look for a motion to adopt the agenda. Thank you, Councilor Ringster. Second, Councilor Bell. Uh, all in favor? And carried, and I should be confirming that, uh, Councillor Toth, you are able to hear us. I can hear you just fine. Thank you. There is a bit of a delay, it seems, in the video at least. So uh, just to, to be aware of that. Um, so without further ado, we can go on to item 3.1. And I believe we turn it over to our staff. And uh, all right, Mr. Douglas, you, you're up. Oops, we'll start. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I'll just give the briefest of introductions and then we'll move on to each uh, member of the SMT to make their presentations on the individual directorates. Uh, just a little bit of background. The um, Provincial Community Charter governing local governments requires that an annual report be submitted every year through the annual general meeting. Um, the annual uh, report is a system of accountability. Uh, for the work that the district does. It outlines uh, what we uh, expect to do uh, in a given year and then record um, the accomplishments or the or the lack thereof. Uh, so that's why we do this every year. Uh, and this builds on the quarterly reports that we submit to you. Uh, same um, sort of setup. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Douglas now. Oh, sorry, no, Corporate and Community Services Division, no. isn't it? Douglas, so is you. No, that's your doing. You're doing. <laughs> oh. Thank you for that, Mr. Yates. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm just going to summar summarize uh, some of the highlights from last year. Um, so the finance department oversees the financial operations of the district and coordinates the financial planning as well as the audit process. The um, budget and the audit are by far our biggest projects that we deal with uh, in a year. Uh, budget process often goes from August right through till February of the following year. And the audit usually goes, uh, we start that in late December and it goes till March, then end of March, maybe early April before the financials are completed. So that includes um, all the meetings that we, we have through the budget process, as well as the bylaws uh, surrounding the five-year financial plan. Um, last year, we worked, we continue to work really hard to have uh, the transitioning of uh, taxes being paid online more than in person. Um, we continue to work on that, uh, you know, every year. I think this year we've only had one lineup that went out the doors that I've seen, and we're in our last year of taxation. So our last week of taxation. So, um, you know, I would say, you know, COVID was a huge jump for that, you know, having people paying online, and but we continue to work towards uh, more uh, payments coming through uh, online. <clears throat> uh, last year, we... Uh, really introduced a procurement area in our finance department, although we had uh, procurement um, processes within the district. We have a procurement coordinator now that uh, puts out most of the tendering on, uh, on a software that we have online called Bids and Tenders. And so uh, that happened within to 2022. Um, and the report describes that we had uh, 29 active procurements uh, last year, and um, there'll be more this year. 
Uh, the other area that we look after is information technology. And of course, uh, they look after the day-to-day -day, uh, operations of the IT department, as well as enhancing our system. Um, they're also heavily involved in the security of all our buildings. So whether that's a FOB system or a alarm system or uh, cameras, uh, we enhanced uh, quite a few of our buildings last year with uh, cameras and um, uh, just better security. Um, <clears throat> probably one of the bigger projects that the IT looked at last year was website redesign. Uh, we worked with communications and the rest of the staff here to, um, to bring that through. And although we still have enhancements to do on the website, it is launched and it is working and it is, uh, you know, it is a, a remarkable improvement over pre year. And um, the finance department also is involved, heavily involved with the airport operations, and we work with the airport manager uh, often weekly uh, on questions and um, other things. So that's the finance department. Great. Thank you. Now I understand some of the confusion. So now we'll go sort of back to the uh, corporate and community services division. Ms. Roberts, sorry, Council, unless there's questions for Mr. Douglas. Great. Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah. Uh, so in 2022, the Division of Corporate and Community Services was the administration division and housed human resources, uh, corporate services, or corporate officer, as well as communications. And so I will just start with human resources. Uh, we continue to focus on retention and recruitment in 2022. And we were able to hire a deputy corporate officer as well as a community safety coordinator. And then we were coming out of the COVID year. So we had a return to work for many of our employees that had been working remotely, which included some in-person training opportunities that we hadn't had in a couple of years. Um, as well as our long service awards that had been on hold for two years. So uh, we saw, we were able to recognize employees that had been with the district for up to 30 years last year. And uh, we saw even more this year. Uh, we did some leadership training and we started LinkedIn uh, lunch and learns for staff. So they different topics rotating monthly that staff could come and learn about during the lunch hour. We also took on a culture audit, which consisted of 12 questions that every single employee at the District of Seashell was asked in an anonymous and confidential space. And then those themes were taken and there is now a culture committee for 2023 that is um, championing these ideas that came out of 2022. And uh, we also worked with ORCA, who's our uh, occupational health and safety consultant to revitalize and sort of unearth our Joint Occupational Health and Safety Program, and that was the, those targets were all met for 2022. And now moving forward, we have a new program for communications. For communications, we had everything from uh, grand openings of the accessible Hackett Park stage to public engagement for short-term rentals. Um, they were very busy, and uh, they did a lot of sharing for public uh, consumptions. Things like water restrictions, our cooling centers, our communications department was on on top of making sure the public had that messaging. We also celebrated 20 years at Seaside Center, and uh, they worked together with arts and culture and parks to open the Jane Bowers Dog Park. We also received over 700 letters that were acknowledged um, and received on behalf of council through the communications department. Uh, for arts and culture, we had CEIA Days, was our first annual CEIA Days last year. We're in the middle of that right now, and um, last June 21st uh, marked the, the first annual. And we had our 19th annual Arts Fest that had 30, over 3,500 people attend online or in-person events uh, in 2022. And corporate services, we digitized many of the district documents last year and uh, went through a number of service requests and bylaw adoption and uh, obviously had our general local election. Well, those are the highlights. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, Council? Points or clarification? Anybody wondering why Councillor Bell is looking like a little something out of an alien? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
we'll we'll move right along. Um, to to yes to to our uh, director of planning and development services, Mr. Allen. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, reporting on behalf of the planning and development division, which includes a development services, building inspection, and bylaw enforcement, I am pleased to lead this team full of talented and hardworking individuals. Uh, 2022 was a big year for us in this division. Um, adoption of zoning by law number 580. It was a significant amount of work in 2022, which followed uh, concluded years of review. And, and it was a, a pleasure to complete that last year. While at the same time, also working on the creation, adoption, and commencement of implementation of the short-term rental regulations. And so while, while related in short-term rental, uh, does relate to zoning bylaw. Many of the amendments were to the business license bylaw and conducting those processes parallel at the same time was a significant amount of work for every single individual in our division. And um, we're very proud of those accomplishments. Both of those follow on the heels of the housing needs assessment and the implementation report, which carried from 2019 to 2021 and showing an importance of providing housing options and securing existing housing for the people of Seashelt. Um, along the way, in addition to the business license bylaw amendments for short-term rentals, we updated, modernized, and in some cases overhauled bylaws for the building bylaw, business license bylaw, the fees and charges bylaw, and the bylaw enforcement notice bylaws. Many of these bylaws were a decade old and required updated updates for a variety of reasons from provincial regulation through to the cost of doing business and everything else related to that. The building department was also quite uh, busy integrating and implementing cloud permit and uh, applications are now made and delivered electronically, primarily by a PDF and electronic messaging rather than large rolls of paper stacks and copies of permit plans. And so we are thrilled to do that. There's uh, minor growing pains and advancements along the way and everybody's getting used to it and it's turned out proven to be a very good advancement for us in our workplace efficiencies. Um, we also advanced on many of our dedicated long-term rental projects that we feel like we've been talking about for some time and we're getting very close and excited to report on those this time next year as well. Um, but in terms of the Green Court, Community Services, Ebb Tide and Telus Living, in 2022, we went through the development permits, we went through the housing agreements and we're now into building permit servicing agreement and concluding the applicant's individual financing and other requirements and getting very close also. And that will be a benefit to our community. Uh, other smaller things such as implementing the street patio project. We are on a patio pilot project throughout COVID and into now and recognizing that the use of our streets in our downtown core relates to more than just simply driving vehicles, but providing common public spaces for people to enjoy our town and increase its vibrancy. Now, further to that, in terms of uh, training and staffing, we did add the policy planner position, um, which has been an asset to us. We had our bylaw officers complete course in mental health first aid, as well as focusing on people who were experiencing crisis. And as we've discussed previously, that the bylaw enforcement profession is constantly evolving and becoming a very uh, integral part of our organization here. Uh, our two uh, building officials have both passed the level one plumbing official in 2022, and they continue to develop uh, their their portfolios, their professional accreditations, and moving upwards in their careers. And, and that's great under the guidance of Mr. Nias. And then a couple of our planners um, who are not yet members of the Planning Institute of BC and not yet registered professional planners have entered into pre-candidacy membership, and we look forward to... Uh, them joining us within the profession, hopefully this year and into next. And um, that concludes the report from our division. Thank you. Great, thank you. All right, I will assume we can pass the microphone to Mr. Dillon, Director of Engineering and Operations. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, so um, I'm gonna, I think the annual report is an opportunity for our team to take stock of what happened in the last year and the challenges and the successes we've had. We report regularly to council in the form of a capital project update. So um, I'm not gonna get into too much of the minutia, but um, as a team, 
I think we were challenged this year with the construction escalation, um, the permitting process timelines. Uh, those were big challenges, but in light of those, we were able to get some important things done. And so um, some of the things that uh, my team um, on upon reflection wanted to highlight to council today, uh, some of the things that they're really proud about um, are for the operation center and how we're very close to the occupancy permit on that and how that project highlighted collaboration between contractors, um, planners, and all the people on staff to get that done uh, on time and on budget. Um, and so that was a big success that we're all sharing as an organization. <clears throat> We've moved along with our Seashell uh, Transportation Master Plan, uh, which we hope to present to council soon. I think this is a great foundational document for the community to promote active transportation. Um, another big note on active transportation is the Wharf Avenue sidewalk improvements which um, the feedback has been that it uh, really freshens up the town upon entry into from Highway 101. You, it looks a lot more presentable. There's better co connectivity for walking and a lot of the businesses are using that space to uh, display their, their signs and things like that. Um, uh, so that was on the engineering project side. On the public works side, um, some of the big highlights and the changes we've uh, adopted last year were to bring in a crack ceiling program and a pavement uh, rehab program. So we've invested a lot in our road infrastructure to make sure that it lasts longer, it's in uh, better condition, and we get a longer, uh, a better life cycle um, cost out of them. Um, another important uh, thing that we did this year is come up with a multi-year plan for line painting. Um, it was really done on an ad hoc basis, and so. Um, you will have noticed uh, in some areas of town where the line painting has been refreshed and we hope to do that in a more systematic way that's it planned better. Um, and then another big thing in, on the public works side is the snow and ice removal operations. Um, uh, we're quite involved this year um, and um, during all these events, um, our public works crew worked tirelessly to get out there as soon as possible to make sure the roads were safe for everybody using them. Um, and then on, another ongoing issue is um, just with the encampments. Uh, it's been a, uh, a major uh, a source of work for our public work staff and uh, they've been able to keep on top of that to the extent they can, but uh, hopefully the uh, issue is addressed uh, in the future and they'll have to jump in as much as they have. Um, Another aspect of engineering operations is sustainable infrastructure, um, and this involves our developments. So several developments are proceeding. We've uh, been working with developers on uh, putting together service agreements. Um, and as well, uh, as part of that sustainable infrastructure, it also includes asset management. So last year, we were able to adopt an asset management policy and include uh, reporting on the condition of our assets in the annual budget. Um, so those asset report cards are a good way to benchmark our infrastructure against other communities and, and see if we're making progress. Um, last year, parks was in my division. So some of the highlights from parks um, were the completion of the Hackett Park stage and amphitheater. And uh, we used that uh, in cooperation with Arts and Culture to paint it. And uh, it was a great space last year for Canada Day. And I'm sure it will be again um, in a few days when we celebrate there. And um, as mentioned previously, the Ebb Tide, Ebb Tide Dog Park was officially opened. And um, it's uh, serving a great purpose for the community. So um, things have moved along well. Um, and the other thing um, that I really want to report on is the wastewater and the work that's being done there, especially on the training front. Um, having now this this uh, report is already out of date because um, it mentions uh, we have one operator that achieved level three, but he actually achieved level four recently, and that was Caden Walkie. So um, big success story with our our internal hires uh, progressing, um, and then uh, additionally, this is one thing I really jumped out to. To me and that staff want to highlight is the reduction in potable water usage at the water resource center um, by 85 percent um, is noticed on noted on page 38 uh, of the agenda 
So um, I think that's a big thing to celebrate. Um, and then um, on community facilities, because that was in my area as well last year, uh, report, proud to report 889 rental bookings. Um, so quite a bounce back from the COVID years. And most of the upgrades at Rockwood have been completed. And uh, uh, some of you were there today to uh, see that facility and how much better shape it is now. So, and also um, Seaside Center, all of the stairs were redone and there's been a lot of work into that uh, facility as well. Um, so just a quick snapshot, 2023 is going to be quite busy. And so some of the highlights of that going forward will be the Wakefield lift station, which is starting construction, uh, active transportation network project under construction, Inlet Avenue revitalization, uh, repairs to our outfall or sewage outfall. And then in terms of studies and policy work, the sanitary sewer modeling and master plan is ongoing. Um, the DCC bylaw major update is going to be happening in 2023, and we are looking at our septic receiving facility and the long-term plan on how to better manage that and make it a financially sustainable operation. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Council. I know you've seen all of this. Uh, I'm just I suppose to anchor it and put it on the record. There, there have been some uh, changes. And what we're looking at today, they're itemized on page two of our agenda. I think it's fair to say they're for clarification and some minor corrections. Um, so, yes, Councillor Inkster. Yeah, thank you. Uh, not a lot of questions throughout. I just wanted at the end to just to acknowledge the SMT or as they're known in the community more clearly as the management team, the District of Seashell for the support and guidance of our organization. Mm -hmm. Yep. In 2022 going forward. Thanks. Thank you. So I don't need to say that. Uh, all right. Great. Um, we do require under the community charter resolution, which is at the bottom of our first page of the agenda. If anybody would care to move that, then I'll volunteer at once. Thank you, Councillor Rowe. Is there a seconder? Councillor Bell. Any discussion? I'll call the question. All in favor? Carried unanimous. I noticed Councillor Toth was voting. Um, I'm sorry, Councillor Toth. I, well, we voted, but was there anything you wanted to comment on or say? Um, I, Councillor Inkster captured the gist of my comments. I just, you know, the recovery from COVID has been uh, a little difficult for our community and for our, our staff, and I'm impressed. Uh, every day uh, with the work that they do and what they bring to the table. So um, thank you to all of our staff and looking forward to the next three and a half years. Thanks. Thank you. All right, council. And uh, that brings us to the end of our, oh, I didn't ask if there were questions from the public. Do we have anybody online? Do we have any, anybody in the gallery that would like to ask a question? It's a <laughs> touche. Okay, I'll uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Seconded. All in favor? We are adjourned. And for those online, we'll reconvene in a few minutes for the committee of the whole. Thanks.